Hey, what's up guys? It's X2Rabby2X here, and we're back with some Minecraft modding made easy. And, you know, I've been saying for a long time that I'm going to dissect my solo redstone mod, so here it goes. This is going to be the part one of the dissection, I guess. And in this episode, we're going to figure out how to mess with brightness, and we're going to also figure out how to mess a little with redstone, and also how to make a complete solar panel in our blockium ways. So let's get started I guess um, I already created a our new solar panel as you see here we did not create the class just yet but you know this is just this is basic this is really 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 basic we've done this many many times so just go ahead and create a brand new um, variable which is this blocking solar panel and then we're gonna have a blocking solar panel class which is right here but it's not implemented yet we're going to get to that and then simply you know just set it up right now it's giving us an error because there's no such class so just go ahead and get that out we have our blocking solar panel so next what we want to do is in our blocking solar panel we will want to extend block I believe I'm going to keep looking at my other solar panel yep extends block and let's go ahead and that's going to be our constructor as you can see I kind of zoomed in the uh, um, the screen so maybe you'll see this better or maybe not I don't know so we want to make a constructor so it's public block blockium solar panel and um, let's see what are, what is the <coughs> sorry what is the is it int x and an x int x and int y in the parameters? Now in inside of the constructor we're gonna put super as we're going up to the super class. Um, open parenthesis x comma y comma material dot rock closing parenthesis and semicolon. So this is what we're gonna give it is in our mod blockium we're passing a two hundred and eight and a zero. So we're passing it the X is the ID number which is going to be 208 the 0 the Y is the block index and texture which we're going to override eventually and we're passing it also in material which is rock so you need um, you know just a regular pickaxe to bring it down next what we're going to do is let me look in here oh well actually next we can work on a method a brand new method so go to your mod blockium .java or mod whatever you have and all the way down as we we have add render we have add fuel I think that also might be lowercase so let me let me do that I forgot to do that in my previous video but right after add fuel so outside in the class not in any already existing method we're gonna make our own method and this is not gonna be overridden or anything so go ahead and type in public um, is it int I think it's boolean yeah public boolean B O O L E A N, and then make it is um, I don't know is solar, and then open parenthesis we're gonna need to pass in a world world, and an int x int y and an int z, and then also a int block id. There we go, and after that we're gonna make two braces opening and closing brace, and we have our is solar method now this is gonna be this is easy we could have done this inside of the block but this way if we have it in our generalized mod underscore blockium class we can use this at any other next class so for example if you wanted to make two solar panels two different ones we could use the same method from here and we would not have to overwrite the method in two different places because we can just use the one that's here so um first what we want to do is let me let me go back to that again um, okay so we have our is solar method we passed in three integers and that um, okay so inside of our mod blockium we're gonna type in inside of the is solar method we're gonna type in if world which we passed in dot get brightness oops, brightness open parenthesis then we're gonna pass in x y well actually y plus one and z and then block id um, 
then you're gonna do after that you're gonna do a closing parenthesis um, let's do is greater than greater than or equal to I don't know what I did is greater than 0.99 <coughs> so what it does now it it if you call this method it checks that if the world brightness x y plus 1 and z so what this does is it gets the x coordinate y coordinate and z coordinate but for the y coordinate it checks for the block right above it because blocks themselves don't have an actual brightness simply because they're blocks and light doesn't go inside of blocks so well unless you're a glowstone but so we're going to do x y plus 1 z and then block id so what it does is it checks if there's sunlight right on top of the block that we want it and that's exactly what we want because we're making a solar panel so it has to detect sunlight and now this is greater than 0.99 world.get brightness returns a float a, like a decimal value of how bright it is and glowstone and sun are at 1.00 so I just made it if the brightness is greater than 0.99 you will return well we're, we're gonna work on that right now but you can lower this 0.99 you can make it 0.5 and then will I think torches are 0.7 so it will detect torches also if you put them right on top but also what this is going to do is if you put a glowstone right on top of the block it will act as if there's a sun so after the if statement let's just do return true and then we can do else return false so what this does is if the brightness on one block higher than the block that we're tr going for I guess our uh, solar panel is the greater than 0.99 pretty much meaning if there's a glowstone on top of our block or if, there, if the sun is at like high noon or if whatever is on top of our block is shining down on our block then return true for is solar and then else if it's not then we just return false so what this does is if we call the method is solar from another class it's gonna it's gonna check that block to see if sun is hitting it and if it is, it's going to return true. So is solar, it will be true. And if it's not, I'm just going to return false, as in no, it's not bright enough. So let's save that again. And now we have we have our own is solar method we can use in the other class. So let's go back to block blocking solar panel. And let's see what we have to do next. Tick rate. Okay. So we're going to make a class called public int tick rate. I'm think it's a capital R yes it is public int tick rate open parenthesis closing parenthesis then we're not gonna pass anything in but we're gonna return something so tick rate is pretty much the time that it takes between um, pretty much the time it takes between updates for the block and now so let's say ours is for my solar panel was 120 that's around I don't know that's around 10 seconds I really don't know what the 120 is counting in because it's not in seconds it's not in milliseconds it's like weird but basically it took it about 10 seconds every single 10 seconds it checked if the brightness was what it is now you can return one and it will check like pretty much instantly but that might lag your game down a lot just completely unnecessary checks so what I I don't know what I recommend is maybe make the maybe make it 120 so it's not really accurate to the second but if you give it like five six seconds it's gonna it's gonna give you a nice um, response so for our tick rate you just want to return a number the lower it is the faster it will track for brightness the higher it is the least accurate uh, well the less accurate it will be but also will not suck of suck as much of your power or and uh, or memory that's what I meant to say okay so now that we have the tick rate, let's work on this. Oh, okay. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this. And you, you guys may see it. So what we're doing is, oh, okay, I forgot to make a. Okay, so on top of our constructor, our constructor is public block blocking solar panel, and you pass an int in x uh, int y. Right above that, you're gonna want to type public um, boolean is uh, or uh, it's I don't know what let's just name it solar and then a uh, semicolon now let's see if I said to anything okay 
in our constructor then, in our block blocking right under the super xy material dot rock, you're going to type solar equals false. So it's automatically set to false. As soon as you place the block, it's set to false. And, you know, it's it has to check to be bright. So next what we're going to do under our tick rate, we're going to do public void on block added on lowercase block added normal and then we're going to pass in world world int y I mean int i int j int k all those mean is it's x y and z so <coughs> next what we're going to do is I'm pretty sure let's on block added um, if we check into you guys don't see this because it's off screen now but let's see block redstone torch if we open up the route block text to, uh, redstone torch I'm talking too fast here and if we go look at on block added in there as you can see right here you can simply copy this and just send set the parameters part two part three part four to the x y and z but what it does is let's go back so if the world out block metadata whatever you know you can just copy that right out of the block redstone torch is equal to zero super on block added I don't really know what that means but it has to be in there because it calls the super method with a method above it that is overriding but the next one is what we want next one is on block added so if here we type solar and since solar stores a boolean either true or false and here we have if the um, if our block is solar then notify neighbors. Now we did not go over this method just yet, and we're going to get there. Um, I don't know, in like a second, I'm guessing. So we're going to leave this for now. But basically, it's notify neighbors, and then you're going to pass in a world i j and k. This is another custom method I made. So we're going to get to that in a second. And then you're going to want to type in world period schedule capital B lock block capital U update. And then you're going to pass in the i, j, and k, or x, y, and z, whatever you name your variables. Then you're going to type in a block id, which is a class variable that's contained in block. So you have to type it exactly like this, block, and then capital I, capital D. Oops. And that is actually a variable that's stored in block.java class. And it is a special variable that each block gets as their own block id. And then the next after that, after block ID, you're going to put another comma, and you're going to type in tick rate, open parenthesis, closing parenthesis. That's going to give us the tick rate, as in the update time that we have up here. And then you're going to do a closing parenthesis and semicolon. So what this does is on block added, whenever you add the block into the world, it schedules a block update. So in this time, in in our tick rate, which is 120, so in about eight seconds it's gonna schedule a block update so it keeps checking 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 to see if it's bright or not that's what that means and notify neighbors we're gonna get that in a second so let's see what we have next okay that's the redstone stuff how about we just uh, we're gonna get to that later but I like this one this is a pretty easy method you know type in public boolean can provide power open parenthesis closing parenthesis and make sure to have a capital P and capital P and a lowercase c at that. And then all you're going to do is return solar. Now this is going to, this checks if the block itself can provide a redstone power. Now since we're returning our sol, <coughs> sorry for that. If we're returning our, returning our solar variable, meaning this can only be true or false. So the method can provide power can only be true or false, meaning that if it's not solary, solary, I don't know, sol, solarly, I don't know if that makes sense. But oh, phone call. We are back. All right. Before I was rudely interrupted, we were in our can provide power method. So this pretty much says if the, um, if the block is solarly powered, I don't know if that's a word, then it can provide power. So if solar, if it's solar and that's true, then it can provide power. If it's false, then it can't provide power. That's a pretty easy method to grasp. It's not, not that bad. Okay, so next, uh, what are we gonna get? We're gonna get to textures soon, and okay, we can do this also. 
So the next method we want in there is public void on block destroyed by player. Now on is lowercase and everything else is uh, uppercase as the first letter. So on block destroyed by player. And then we're going to do an open parenthesis. We're going to type in world world into I and J and K and into L. That's just the uh, the basic method, I guess. That is the default method which we're overriding. And then in there, again, what you're going to do is you're just going to notify neighbors. So that's another custom method that we're not we're going to get to soon. And what you're going to do is notify neighbors with a capital N, second N. And you're going to open parenthesis world I, J, and K. You're going to pass in the X, Y, and Z and the world. Closing parenthesis and then a semicolon. So what this does is if it's if the uh, block is destroyed by a player, it has to notify the neighbors because let's say that if the block is powering redstone and we get rid of that block, well then the redstone will still be powered because we haven't notified the neighbors that the power is no longer there. And this, I don't know if this makes sense to you guys, but I mean, you have to notify all the neighboring blocks if you're working with redstone simply because they can't stay turned on if there's no power and it's I don't know it's kind of weird but you have to do it so I guess we can get to our notify neighbors indirectly okay we're gonna get to that later also um, here we go here's our notify neighbors now I did this because I don't know I just wanted to make my own custom method for this simply because this was I think this was unnecessary so you're, you're gonna do public void notify neighbors with a capital N second N and then you're going to pass in world into I, J, and K. Then in here, what you're going to do is you're going to do world dot notify blocks of neighbor change. And then you're going to pass in I, J, and K. And you're going to have to like give this plus ones and minus ones on every single one. And you see I have six different lines. They look almost the same, but I did I j minus 1k, i j plus 1k, i minus 1 jk, i plus 1 jk, i j k minus 1, i j k plus 1. So what this does is notifies every single, in every single direction, x, y, on the x, y, and z coordinate plane, it notifies every single block surrounding this block to tell it that, hey, I just destroyed it or whatever, it's been destroyed or it just updated, so make sure to update you also. So this is what lets us notify the redstone for example like a redstone um, a redstone dust next to our block that hey our block is being powered so turn on the redstone this is what it does so you can just go ahead and copy this this is not an overridden class it's custom and I was just I just did it for the ease so right now you should have absolutely no errors that notify neighbors method eliminated that 